दी डायमंड सूत्र विल देयर बी एनी बीइंग इन फ्यूचर विल अंडरस्टैंड दी सूत्रस व्हाट डू यू थिंक सुबुति कैन दी तथागत बी सीन बाय पोजीशन ऑफ हिज मार्क्स unless you see this undercurrent in subhuti's consciousness or unconsciousness you will not understand the diamond sutra subhuti inquires a very important question and that symbolizes the flow of unconsciousness as undercurrent subhuti asked will there be any beings in the future period in the last time in the last epoch in the last 500 years at the time of the collapse of good doctrine who when these words of the sutra are being taught will understand their truth these words of subhuti are very significant now you will be surprised this is the time subhuti is talking about and you are the people 2500 years have passed subhuti had asked about you he inquires will there be any person after 25 years who when these sutras are spoken will understand them or will be able to explain these sutras in the same way as you did to us therefore these words are very significant buddha had buddha had said that whenever a religion is born or whenever a buddha turns the wheel of dham when a master comes depending on his inner awakening he turns the wheel and based on his innerness the wheel will remain in rotation for a certain number of years even after he is gone he remain for thousands of years it may vanish just as the buddha vanishes but it all depends on the inner awakening and the force with which you have created the wheel to come into motion you would have seen ordinarily the spin wheel if you use the less force it does one rotation and it stops altogether if the force with which you turn the wheel it goes on moving for a little longer time so to it all depends on the innerness of the buddha of the awakened one with what force is he turning the wheel of dham what is the strength of these words that he has spoken i have been speaking to you for almost two decades and when the social media facebook brings back the messages from the memory 3 years or 4 years old they have the same great effect as they had when for the first time they have been posted a couple years back you may have forgotten that this word this message when it was posted 5 years ago you had liked it it has not become part of your consciousness and when it appears again you read it you cherish it you like it you share it 
So what is the strength of these words? What is the energy force that these words carry with them? It depends on the inner state of the awakened one. And with what intensity has he spoken the word? I am speaking to you. I may pour my entire energy into it and with the modulation of the words, choice of the words, can create an indelible impression on your consciousness that the effect of that can never be erased even if you are gone. The moment you will remember that, you are again thrown into the same state as if a strong current has flown into your being, through your body. The moment you remember those words which I have spoken to you, this is the kind of energy field which is being infused in these talks so that even after I am gone or I am not available anymore and you want to listen to these, they will create the same effect as if you are listening to me once again live. The only thing is this, right now you are listening to me at my pleasure. As long as I am speaking, you will remain glued to the system and continue to listen. When you are listening to the recorded message, you will listen to it at your own convenience. That is the only difference. Then you have to create the same ambience as I have created now. There is a certain hour when you all come to your systems, connect, I am connecting you to this session. You are vulnerable and open and available to these sessions. The talk begins, the flow of energy, the process of transformation begins all over. If you can create the same ambience when you are listening to these talks from the recorded system from the YouTube channel that contains all these videos so that people wherever they are they can listen to this. Buddha had said that whenever a religion is born or whenever a Buddha turns the wheel of them. So what am I doing? I am turning a process of transformation for you and through you to those who may listen to it. When a post is posted, a message is posted on social media, and you share it, you are continuing to turn the wheel. The message has appealed to you. Not that all messages appeal to you all the time. Certain message has appealed to you now. So you shared it. You are continuing in the process of augmenting the turning of this wheel of dham, this process of transformation. It happens. When you share on a regular basis these messages, there are people who are in your friend circle. When they listen, they are captivated by the aura, by the energy field of these messages. They cannot hold on to themselves 
without sending a friendship request to me direct. When the indirect posting of these messages creates such an effect, they would like to be direct in the mainstream. This is known as turning of the wheel in myriad ways. And once the wheel is turned, it starts to stop, it loses its momentum. You turn a wheel and it will start moving, then by and by a moment will come when it will slow down first and then stop completely. This is the process of spinning of the wheel. When a Buddha moves the wheel of dham, it takes 2,500 years for it to stop completely. It goes on in, goes on changing its in, intensity. When a Buddha, awakened one, moves the wheel of thumb, it takes 2,500 years for it to stop completely. After every 2,500 years, it goes on losing momentum. So those are the five ages of Dham. After each 500 years, the Dham will be less and less in its potency and effectiveness. And then after 25 centuries, the wheel will stop completely. It will need another Buddha to turn it for the coming 25 centuries. In that process, each awakened one has a role to perform, to give momentum to the wheel so that it is spinning continues and your role is also significant in shape. Your energy field is not as strong as mine, as that of the awakened one, but whatever insignificant contributions you do, that helps in the process. This is a rare phenomenon. It is really intriguing that Subhuti asks Buddha about this. Will there be any beings in the future period, in the last time, in the last epoch, in the last 500 years, at the time of the collapse of the good doctrine, who when these words of the Sutra are being taught, will understand their truth? And hear what Buddha had to say. The Lord replied, the Lord replied, and this time he replied in a very soft voice. Do not speak thus, Subhuti. Do not speak thus, Subhuti. Yes, even then there will be beings who, when these words of the Sutra are being taught, will understand their truth. For even at that time, Subhuti, there will be bodhisattvas, there will be awakened ones, and these bodhisattvas, Subhuti will not be such as have honored only one single Buddha, not such as have planted there roots of merit under one single Buddha alone. This is significant. He is mentioning that after 2500 years, he is speaking of present time. The Buddhas of the present time will have the roots of merit not under one single Buddha alone. On the contrary, Subhuti, those Bodhisattvas 
when these words of the sutra are being taught will find even one single thought of serene faith be such as have honored many hundreds of thousands of buddhas such as have planted their roots of merit under many hundreds and thousands of buddhas know they are subhuti to the known they are subhuti to tathagat i know all my people who have come who have not come yet who are to come because buddha keeps on calling you his clarion call goes on you how long will you wait how long will you let me wait for you my time is going come soon known they are subhuti to the tathagat through his buddha cognition seen they are subhuti by tathagat with his buddha eye fully known they are subhuti to tathagat and they all subhuti will be it and acquire an immeasurable and incalculable heap of merit these words are significant as these overflow the compassion of buddha for what he had said 2500 years ago 2500 years ago and once a buddha makes a promise to someone existence fulfills it in myriad ways remember this if i have made a promise to you existence will fulfill that promise these words are significant as these overflow the compassion of buddha for what he had said 2500 years ago that he is committing to bring nirvana to the entire humanity through you and i the role of the awakened one the living master is more and along with your contribution plays an important role when you share a post something begins to happen to the people who are in your friend circle they are captivated sometimes they may mention to you of this who is this person who is post you go on sharing on my on your timeline i find his messages really deep it touches my heart look deep into you you will find sometimes people will mention to you of this buddha is talking about you the sutra is being read to you 25 centuries have passed and subhuti has asked about you many a times i had told you that you are all buddhas many of you will become bodhisattvas as many of you are on the way it is a strange that subhuti will ask such a question and more strange is what buddha says these people after 25 centuries will not be less fortunate than you but will be more fortunate i have told you many times that you are ancient ones you have been here before as well you have walked on this earth many times before and you are not listening to dham for the first time you have come across many buddhas in your past lives sometimes as a krishna or as a christ or mahabir or a mohammed or jarathrust but you have come across many many buddhas and lightened ones 
In your unconsciousness, you never recognize Buddhas. And now, do not remember either. But I remember all those whom I have ever met in my life. Remember there is a power within that knows beyond our knowing. We are neither aliens nor as strangers. Instead, we are bound to each other by a causeless force. You are fortunate to know so many Buddhas. And if you become a little alert, all the seeds that have been sown in you by the past Buddhas will start blooming. And when these will sprout, you will reap the fruits at the dawn of new awakening. You will start flowering. And Buddha says, Known they are Subhuti to the Tathagat through his Buddha cognition. Seen they are Subhuti by the Tathagat with his Buddha eye. Fully known they are Subhuti to Tathagat. It is mysterious. Yes, yet indeed it is possible. A Buddha can have a vision of the future. He can see through the fog of the future. His clarity is such, his vision is such, that he can throw a ray of light into the unknown future. He can see. It will look very mysterious that Buddha sees. You are you. Buddha sees you listening to Diamond Sutra. It looks very mysterious that Gautam the Buddha sees you listening to the Diamond Sutra as Tausha Buddha explains once again. From your standpoint it may seem almost unbelievable because you do not know even how to see in the present. How can you believe that anyone can see in the future? You know only one capacity to look into the past. You can only look backwards. You are past oriented. And whatsoever you think about is of the past. Your future is not a vision of future. Instead, it is just a pro projection of the modified past. Vision of the modified past. It is not future at all. It is your yesterday trying to be repeated as tomorrow. Are you aware that you move forward looking into the past? You are never open to the new. When you are driving a vehicle, you have to constantly look into the review mirror when you have to change the lanes. Consciously I have stopped looking into the review mirror. To me, it reminds me of looking into the past to go forward. So instead I use the side mirrors that are on the two sides of the car, standing like the wings of a plane. By looking into that, I move forward, change the lanes. Are you aware that you move forward looking into the past? You never open to the new. Something you have tasted yesterday and it was sweet and you want it again tomorrow. This is your future. You have seen, you have been in love with somebody and you want to make love again in the future. And this you call your future. Your future is nothing but a repetition of the past. 
it is not future at all. You know nothing what the future is all about. You cannot know what future is because you cannot even know what the present is. And present is available and you are so blind that you are not even ready to see into that which is already here in front of your eyes. We go to the restaurant, we have a platter of food and delicious food in front of us and we go on talking about the past events which are no more relevant at the time when the food is entering into your system through the esophagus to give you nourish and nourishment. You are so blind that you cannot even see into that which is already here. Instead you go on lamenting for that which is gone or not yet. In both cases it is not there and that which is in front of you never interests you. But then eyes open, you can see even into that which is not present, all oh, that which is going to happen, you can have glimpses of that. The way to see future is first to see the present. Once you are capable of looking completely into the present moment, you are available to this. You become capable of looking into the future. This is ec ecstatic. To even think that Gautam the Buddha had seen you listening to the Diamond Sutra. In the Diamond Sutra you are talked about that is why I have chosen to talk to you on these sutras. Many years ago I spoke on the discipline of transcendence. And now once again, and now once again I have chosen to overflow Gautam the Buddha. When I came across these words, I immediately remembered, this is for my people. They must know that even they have been looked into by Gautam the Buddha and that something about them have been said 2500 years ago. Indeed Buddha had seen you and seen you all and seen you all in this commune as it happened when for the first time when these sutras were spoken to 1250 monks in Pindika Park near Shravasti. Now times have changed. You are all the monks to whom these sutras are being narrated. Indeed, Buddha had seen you all and this is about you. Buddha had predicted your arrival on the path. The wheel that Buddha had moved has stopped. The wheel has to be moved again. And that is going to be my and your life work. Indeed, that wheel has to be moved again so that the process of transformation of human consciousness or birth of a new man continues a long. Once this starts revolving, it will have again 25 centuries lifespan. Once it starts moving, it goes on moving for 25 centuries at least. And it has to be again and again because everything loses momentum after some time. Remember everything functions under the law of nature and this law of nature is called entropy. You throw a stone with great energy, 
but it goes a few hundred feet and that, then it folds down. Exactly like that, Dham has to be made again and again alive. Dham means the way, the path. Only a living Buddha can do this. Our living Buddha breathes life force into it. Then it becomes alive once again for 2500 years ago. Then slowly and slowly its momentum gets less and less effective. Everything that is born has to die. So is thumb. And before it dies, life force is infused into it by a living Buddha. But Buddha says, Subhuti, do not speak thus. Subhuti must be thinking. Only we are fortunate. We have listened to Buddha, lived with Buddha, walked with him. We are fortunate. We are blessed people. What will happen after 25 centuries when the wheel of thumb has completely stopped moving? He must have been thinking. He is thinking about you as unfortunate people, but Buddha continues and says, Do not speak thus, Subhuti. Do not start thinking that only you are fortunate. That is a very subtle ego. We are fortunate. Nobody else is so fortunate. Buddha immediately puts his hand on Subhuti's mouth. Do not speak the Subhuti. Yes, even then there will be beings who when these words of the Sutra are being taught will understand their meaning, will understand their truth. And I know there are people who understand the truth. Slowly and slowly the morning is happening. The dark nights are disappearing. Slowly and slowly the seed is gaining the ground. It is entering your heart. For even at that time, Subhuti, there will be Bodhisattvas. There are many here who are going to become Bodhisattvas. Just a little work more. A little more effort into meditativeness more energy and its concentration as well, avoiding all distractions and then it is sure to happen and it is going to happen to many. And you are indeed fortunate ones, Buddha says. And these Bodhisattvas Subhuti will not be such as have honored only one single Buddha. Remember, he is saying that Subhuti and these Bodhisattvas Subhuti will not be such as have honored only one single Buddha, nor such as have planted their roots of merit under one single Buddha only. On the contrary, Subhuti, those Bodhisattvas, who when these words of Sutra are being taught, will find even one single thought of serene faith. You become like a moth gathering nectar from different flowers. If you can even understand a single word of Diamond Sutra, or you can understand a simple look into my eyes. You can understand a simple word, simple gesture of my inner dance, Buddha says. If you can even understand a single word of Diamond Sutra or you can understand a simple look of my I into your eyes, how I look at you, the gestures, or even if you can understand a single gesture of my inner dance, 
you can never remain unaffected and your process of transformation must begin. If you can understand and flow with this single gesture of my inner dance, your process will attain a new impetus. It will continue to gain momentum.